Kabuhay. I'm Mike Constantino from the Philippines. I'm here to talk to you a bit about what's going on in the music industry here in our market in light of the pandemic. Let me share my screen with you guys. There you go. A little bit about myself first. I've been in the industry for about uh, more than two decades now from many sides of the music industry. I've been in advertising, events, media, on air, uh, digital as well, as you can see in, in my resume down there in my CV. Um, the cool part about this is that uh, about five years ago, my wife and I put up Homonym, which is the only music specialist agency here in the Philippines. And we deal with clients, uh, we deal with artists, we deal with production houses, we deal with agencies. But a big part of our advocacy is exporting quality Filipino music. And that's where our partnership with the NCCA comes in. So uh, last year, we partnered with them to put up Sonic Philippines, which is the official music business conference of our country. It was a live event face-to-face -face. Uh, this year because of the situation, which was year two, we've had to do it online. Uh, but uh, even if it's online, uh, we had so much fun. We had about 969 attendees, over 40 speakers, um, over 30 artists from 16 different countries, a lot of which are, are part of AKMF this year and beyond. So let me talk to you a bit about the music business situation in the Philippines in the pandemic era. I'll start off with what we start off with during our monthly meetings within AKMF, the COVID-19 situation. So according to the Department of Health of the Philippines, as of November 25, 2020, we've had about 423,000 total cases. It's alarming, I know, but uh, the good part about that is the recovery rate is very high and the death rate is actually very low. So our medical community, along with our government, has been able to figure out how to deal with the cases that we do have. So the situation has been improving and hopefully there won't be any second, third waves coming up and hopefully we can all deal with it as a, as a country, as a community together. As you know, past couple of weeks, past couple of months, we've uh, been hit by uh, some powerful typhoons, Tonyo and Ulysses, and it doesn't help our situation that uh, we're still in quarantine and lockdown in most parts. Uh, we still have some restrictions and a lot of our countrymen are actually suffering. So uh, many of them uh, part of the music industry as well. So we're working with the private sector to be able to give donations and be able to answer the plight of, of a lot of our countrymen right now. So uh, enough of that, uh, of doom and gloom. Some pre-COVID information, I guess, that uh, we'd like to share. So this is from our friends at NLEC or the National Live Events Coalition. Uh, they did an extensive survey of the industry last May 28, and these are the results. According to them, about 300 billion or 6.2 billion US dollars are generated from the music industry. There are two sectors that they covered, the live event sector and the non-live sector, which are the compositions and copyrights. So that 300 billion Philippine pesos is from 2019 to early 2020. Uh, it is said, uh, actually Spotify in the report last year said there are 10 billion streams in Philippines alone. But uh, we saw some reports that it's actually up to 30 billion already by year 2020. So Filipinos are, as you all probably know, are, are very big music lovers. And according to the NLEC survey, there are about 500,000 events per year. So this is from live concerts, arena ones, outdoor ones, to your small bar shows, social events, weddings, you know. And um, according to the same survey, about 360. 16,000 individuals are employed in this ecosystem that we, we call the music industry. So that's comprised of artists, executives, uh, the technical services people, freelance production, a lot more in the ecosystem. A single concert can generate up to about 443 jobs. And uh, because we're working with the CCP or the Cultural Center of the Philippines, we added some information on the performing arts and theater sector 
and they estimate about 500 million pesos or about 10.4 million US dollars uh, in losses due to cancellation of about 600 shows, which employs about 1,700 artists and personnel in, in just the theater uh, industry alone. So as you can see, it's a very robust economy. You know, it's a very creative, econ robust creative economy of music lovers in the music industry. And um, as you can see in the, these stats, um, it's, it's severely affected. Speaking of that, uh, in March 16 of 2020, our government declared what we call an enhanced community quarantine or ECQ. So what this means is it's a total lockdown or closure of leisure activities and venues and public gatherings. Uh, we've been on some form of lockdown ever since. So there have been uh, loosening of restrictions and tightening again, depending on the cases and depending on the situation of, of COVID in, in the country. So ever since, um, there have been no shows, no performances, gigs, or productions whatsoever because of, of this lockdown. It's estimated that about 2.7 billion US dollars or 130 billion pesos have been lost in 2020 because of these lockdowns, according to the NLEX survey. Uh, since amusement is disallowed, about 80 to 90 percent of performing artists and concert producers have not been able to work. And uh, this ecosystem or this value chain is a very, very large one. It's not just the artists or the roadies, engineers, labels, studios, technical crew that make them sound good and make them look good, but we have the cooks waiters, caterers, bouncers, even down to the parking attendants affected because there are no shows, there are no gigs. And that doesn't even include the visual aspect of things, the video directors, producers, editors, writers, the PAs, agencies are got, like ours are affected because uh, if there are no productions, then there's no music needed to be licensed. So we're, we're severely affected as well. Uh, according to the NLEX survey, there are about 3,056 registered event venues. And this is as of May 28th. I'm sure it's much higher now because the, the lockdown has been extended or the, uh, the crackdown uh, on, on live shows has been extended. It's a 64% decline in revenues over 41 billion or 851 million US dollars in projected revenue loss. Um, you'll see some visuals here. The upper visual is from the NLEX study. The lower visual is from a study that we did um, in coordination with ARISE, which uh, the Philippine Congress has done. So you'll see here a large majority of artists earn from bar gigs and live performances. Okay, the hardest hit definitely would be the technical services and freelance production. So there's about the production staff. It's about 15,000 jobs affected. As you can see here, the job displacement is very, very huge. GMA means a general Manila, uh, greater Manila area. The rest of Luzon, which is the, the main, uh, the island group where in Manila is, and then down south besides in Mindanao, is a massive effect, massive job displacement. And to the right, you see that uh, the freelance production workforce majority of them are the breadwinners of their families. So you affect the breadwinners and then the families follow. So really unprecedented and massive effect on the industry and the numbers show. So how have we been coping and surviving as an industry, the artists, the labels, the management, the music industry, the music business sector in general? Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, stuff online that we've discovered it's not all doom and gloom, okay? So the artists, uh, they've in the beginning, they started doing online shows, you know, so mostly donation-based or un these are unpaid. Just trying to figure out the situation, we're still, you know, we still don't know that this is an extended situation. Uh, Facebook was the main platform that we were using. Uh, when it was clear that the situation would uh, be a little more longer term, uh, we, well, we, we've been seeing a lot of artists selling gear. You know, a lot of artists are teaching online. Um, some people are selling stuff like food, sneakers, you know, cook, they're cooking stuff and selling. Uh, we'll show some, some verbatims on that later just to make end, ends meet. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the lockdown, 
the platform started implementing IPs. So they started locking down um, on the IPs. So you can't just perform songs or DJ songs anymore because there are copyrights involved. So artists had to get creative to figure out how to, to earn from, from these online platforms. So platforms like Twitch, online streaming, gaming, uh, started emerging and Kumo, which is a proudly Philippine company, um, artists, DJs started flocking towards that, influencers, and they would be doing live streaming, singing, uh, giving out information, sharing, just hanging out, and they would actually earn from this. Uh, a lot of them earn a lot, so it's it's a viable platform that hopefully even after the pandemic will will keep. Um, providing artists with a, an alternative way of earning. Um, at the bottom, you see brands are now starting to produce content and spending. So we saw this um, August, September, you know, the brands started producing commercials and producing online events again, which is good for agencies like us, but also good for the artists, technical people, video people, sound people that we employ, good for everybody. Uh, the photos here show... Um, this guy is Mr. Ryan Kayabiab, our national artist for music. So he he and his uh, friends put up what they call Bayanihan Musikahan. So Bayanihan means helping each other. Musikahan means musicals. So helping each other through music, in other words. And you'll see here that they've raised over 122 million in funds, donations um, in cash and in kind. And they're still ongoing. They have some Christmas efforts that uh, for sure will generate even more. Here's one of our most beloved artists, Gary Valenciano. He's also been doing some very helpful fundraising so to, to help uh, the marginalized music people uh, to earn, I guess, in this, in this situation. So just some examples that we found online. So this is Kumu. So this is, uh, this is Sonic, our festival. And uh, a lot of the artists are actually on it, monetizing through that. Um, another issue that uh, has been popping up is the importance of wellness uh, through music. Uh, even artists like us need wellness and need entertainment to keep us going. You know, creating keeps us going. Like here, the lives of musicians in the Philippines amid the pandemic. You know, uh, artists are creating, helping them keep sane, helping them get through everything. Uh, we have a uh, we have this AWPI organization artist welfare project uh, in, our, in their own small and big ways they're helping artists by doing fundraisers giving out information teaching artists on you know ways on how to earn here we have uh, ben and ben which is uh, the the philippine artists performing for round festival uh, they they frequently do fundraising they raise about 682,000 pesos um, to help donate to teachers and other uh, this is one of the most renowned drummers here in the Philippines, Mike Alba. He still teaches drumming online, but uh, he's also selling sexy otap. Uh, it's it's a local biscuit that we. Uh, here's an example of a brand uh, that does online concerts. So they hired some Philippine artists and foreign artists. Uh, this the 443 people that I mentioned earlier. It took about that many people and more because there's a technical end now, an online end to, to performances and that they were able to, to give to those guys. Another one is Bowel Clan here, one of the artists that we work with. So they uh, released merch, limited edition merch, and they earned from that, monetizing their image and likeness. So here's here are some verbatims from the Arise Philippines survey that we did Sometime, I think September, September 2020, we had about 287, 290 respondents and about half of them were artists. So when we asked them how they've been coping, this is what they said. So some are doing online selling, some are learning to trade stocks, uh, some became financial advisors, investing in mutual funds, you know, some are relying on their career, some are doing family business, Offering music-related stuff like mixing services, selling stuff, cooking stuff, you know, anything to get by. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of the world-renowned Philippine resilience. In that same study, we asked them what we can do to help, particularly what the government can do to help them. And these are their verbatim answers. So setting up programs to help those who lost their jobs, 
setting clear goals and timelines, better COVID response, subsidies, you know, cash assistance, truly embracing the arts, giving a monthly allowance to everyone would be great. Funding the arts, uh, support for Visayas in Mindanao, so- Southern Philippines, uh, help increase income from streaming platforms is an interesting one because uh, our margins here are, are in our part of the world are low in terms of streaming. Uh, down below, you have opening the music industry back up, but with restrictions, putting laws in place for venue rentals, you know, establishing more promising income rates and security for freelance workers. And I'm happy to report that uh, there are a lot of steps towards this, and I'll talk about that in a, in a while. So how's the music industry in the Philippines changing? Uh, a lot of good things have happened, actually, despite the pandemic. The first one in here is the unification of industry players. So before they were competitors, now they're allies through these coalitions and associations, and everyone is banding together. The NLEC is a good example. Everyone's banding together to make sure that we have um, a viable future for the industry. Next is the embracing of online plat- performances as an option. I know it's not the same as gigging, as live, but uh, now people are more and more accepting that this is something viable for, for artists to do and fan- for fans to enjoy. Exploration of other plat- forms of monetization apart from live performances, uh, like licensing and publishing. You know, artists ask us a lot. Like, can we do limited merch runs? Can we do, how can we earn from live streaming? How can we earn from our catalog? Uh, improvement of online services, for example. So is another, is another way that the industry is changing. So uh, the telcos had no choice but to speed up internet because everyone's at home. Everyone is so demanding because that's how they attend work. That's how they go to school. Uh, this, uh, I'm enjoying online payment and cashless facilities and transactions. So we were a very low credit card penetration country before the pandemic, and this has greatly increased. Everyone is buying stuff online, and therefore the options of them paying, uh, no no contact paying, have have vastly improved. And I'm sure this is going to continue even after after the pandemic. Uh, Emphasis on the importance of strictly following health and safety protocols. So we've been doing this a lot with the productions that we've been doing, and all our friends and colleagues in the industry, industry have been doing this as well. It's important to be strict with the health and safety protocols. Uh, The last two are, I guess, my favorite from from this slide. So artists have just been improving their craft. They're stuck at home. People are taking lessons. People are improving how to play the guitar. So when we do get back, when the artists do get back, you can expect a great, a, a marked improvement in the performance level of the already talented artist pool we have here in the Philippines. The last one, the government has taken notice, more notice, that music is integral to not just culture, but to the economy. There's a creative economy that we we are in that contributes, as you saw, billions to to the bottom line, to the GDP of the Philippines. And the government has recognized that. I'll talk about that uh, in a couple of slides. So bills are now being passed and the recognition of rights in terms of intellectual property and musicians or artists as workers has been identified. So you see here, Senate takes a bill protecting freelancers. And one of the advocates is Cong- Congressman Tof de Venecia, who's spearheading a lot of these programs. Uh, I'll end with that, with this presentation. So the future. So we've survived. Now it's time to revive and thrive. So in the survey that I told you about, 136 respondents said that 94% of them are excited to go back to their career in music after the pandemic. That's great news. So it's a hopeful, it's a hopeful bunch. You know, it's a bright, there's a bright future for the industry and and they recognize it. I'll play this for you. And NLEC um, has gotten our company and a lot of other stakeholders in the industry to come up with this show this month in December. It's just a way of, it's like a blueprint of showing how to safely do a show in this new normal that we're in. Safe, not just for the workers, but also for the audiences that will be attending. We'll be documenting this and we'll be sharing this with everybody so that there's a template to follow in 2021 on how to do events safely, efficiently, effectively. And I believe this is my last slide. So this is what I was talking about. 
uh, we're looking ahead to 2021. It's, it's going to be a bright future for, for everybody in the industry in the Philippines. And we hope uh, you guys can come back and, and see us again once we're back up, um, up to normal doing, doing our old tips and tricks. So this is the biggest news for me in the music industry in the Philippines in 2020. Um, I mentioned Congressman Tof de Venecia. Uh, he, together with about 22 lawmakers, have formed this block, the Artists and Culture and Creative Industries Block, or Achieve, Achieve as they, as they uh, lovingly call it. And this is a law that they're trying to pass, which seeks to introduce and support legislations that protect and promote culture, the arts, the creative industries. So this is a long time coming. So finally, the government will invest significantly in infrastructure, you know, funding for arts, human resource development, marketing and incubation, of course, in partnership with the private sector for the music industry. Uh, they will revisit amusement and entertainment tax because uh, some of you may know uh, it's a little expensive to, to do international shows here, flying in an international artist. Uh, the ticket prices um, tend to be higher than, than typical. So they're looking into that. That will be a huge help for, for the music industry. Uh, there's also a creation of a music development council so that there's an actual government mandated council that's looking into the various sectors of the music industry. Uh, that development, Music Development Council will be working with the NCCA and the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples to make sure that uh, the traditional musical traditions of the Philippines are still preserved. So it's not just contemporary music that we're taking care of, but we're making sure that uh, traditional Filipino music is also taken care of. Uh, this is important, revisiting the intellectual property code, which is... Uh, I think we've been due for, uh, for decades now. So modern, modernizing it to fit the needs of today's contemporary artists uh, within the digital age. So this is exciting. And then uh, last few ones, we'll be exploring how Filipino music can be mainstreamed in, in broadcast media. There's a law out there that's, uh, uh, that could be implemented better. And hopefully this can take that to the next level. Uh, of course, continuing to clamp down on music piracy um, in cooperation with our optical media board. And lastly, making sure that our infrastructure can facilitate all of these. You know, like if you have good internet, then you can enjoy shows and you can upload shows and you can stream shows a lot better. So that's it for my presentation. We'd like to invite you again to join us as we revive in our industry and thrive in 2021 and beyond. We've survived and we're hopeful. We hope you, you guys can join us. You can email me here or at me, or you can get in touch with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts or NCCA through Facebook. And we can figure out how we can work together and collaborate in 2021. Hope to see you in the flesh very, very soon. Mabuhay. <laughs>